It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. I think I found something. Pretty good, yeah. Behind the wheel of a classic car. Oh, stop it. And a go. Scar Britain for antiques. Ooh, I think it's brilliant. The aim? To make the biggest <laughs> profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. You're some man. There'll be worthy winners and valiant losers. <laughs> oh. Will it be the high road to glory? Yeah, baby. Or the slow oh. road to disaster? Oh, oh. This <laughs> is the Antiques Road Trip. <laughs> On guard. Oh, glorious Gloucestershire. And a brand spanking new road trip. Keep your eyes on the road. With Charlie Ross. Would you stop looking at me and look at the road, please? <laughs> and Izzy Barmer. But you're just so desirable and, you know, I just can't tear my gaze <laughs> I'm, away from I'm, You're the first person to ever say that, <laughs> but I'd like you to keep your eyes on the road. Yeah, he's a 1A. Been round the block, too. I'll give you three guesses as to what my first auction was. I don't even know what they had in the 60s. Chickens. No, I would have Pens never of guessed that. I would no, never no, I have guessed that. Now, to quiz road trips, spring chicken. What would be your specialist Ooh, subject? I suppose, like, my specialist subject yeah. is jewellery. Oh, is it? Wiltshire-based auctioneer Izzy... <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> ..is drawn to the sparklier world of antiques. I like anything pretty. Anything pretty? Yeah. Well, you're in the wrong car. <laughs> Old hand Charlie... Look at this quality. ..is also an auctioneer and loves getting his hands on 18th and 19th century furniture. <laughs> I like the rugged look as well. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> now you're in the right car. <laughs> Absolutely right. It's a rather lovely 1968 Triumph 2000. My dad had one of those. This car, then, yeah. came onto the market when you began your career as an auctioneer. Do you know, you're absolutely right. This car was made just as I was selling chickens. <laughs> Hopefully, today's buys won't fall foul. Are you a good negotiator? Do you know what? I do it all with a smile. Sometimes it doesn't work. No. <laughs> Get out of my shop. <laughs> Insolent man. <laughs> You know, you never really dress without a smile, chaps. I've got one advantage. Have you seen the number plate of this car? No. C-U-R. Charlie Unbelievable Ross. Oh, How good Charlie. is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you for unique, boyo. <laughs> With £200 each in their pockets, they're on a countryside quest through the Cotswold counties before shimmying over the border into Wales and a junket through the southwest with the final auction in battle. The first leg of this trip will end up at auctioning Cardiff. But our conquest begins in the town of Stowe-on-the-Wold. What could be nicer? Charlie and Izzy will share the first shop, Tara Antiques. First, parking. Would you like a little assistance? From you, Charlie. Or... I don't think you need assistance the way you drive. Oh, quite the gent, Charlie. Back you come, matron. Keep coming. <laughs> we'll go about six inches. Whoa, there. Whoa. Hey, careful. <laughs> right hand hard down. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be in time. the shop in a minute, my dear. <laughs> Five minutes. <laughs> Goodness gracious, you two. Come on, time to get inside. Are we done? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this shop covers three floors. Bound to be a bargain in here, but where? This is fascinating. I think it's nothing more than a coal bin, but it's Art Deco, true Art Deco. You can see by the lines, made of metal, but they've simulated bird's eye maple. So it looks like a bit of maple wood. You could use it for something else. 1930, 1940, pre-war. Good fun for 20 or 30 quid. Will a haggle be fun too? We'll see. Where's Izzy got to? Oh, look at this. I was not expecting to see this in the Cotswolds. It's a piece of railway arnab. LMSR is the London Midland Scottish Railway to be returned to oil stores 
Derby, and that's where I'm originally from is Derby. Railway on is really, really popular, big collectors for it out there. However, we are going to Cardiff, uh, we're not going to Derby, and at 48 pounds, I think that might just be a little bit too steep. Wise move, methinks. There's something here that looks as if it might be of historic interest. What have we got on the label? Model of Queen Mary's doll's house. Queen Mary is married to George V. I bet she had a fantastic doll's house. Ah, Coulden, so it's Staffordshire pottery. Replica of the Queen's doll's house, designed by Sir Edward Lutchins, one of the great architects. And the original was exhibited publicly for the first time in the British Empire exhibition in 1924. The decorations, furniture, furnishings and fittings were executed by leading artists and craftsmen of the day. The doll's house and contents were valued at £275,000. How is that for a doll's house? Itself, it's just about 100 years old. So I think that's interesting. It's £29, not a lot of money, and I like it. £12 for a miniature horn. Just check if it works. Go on, gal. <laughs> More path. No, <laughs> no, no. 10 out of 10 for effort, though. Ha 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 ha! Found the expert at work. <laughs> we found anything? I've seen a lot of extremely lovely things that are out of my price range. Have you found anything? <gasps> yeah, there's one bit of history I quite like. There's something that's wacky, which is typical by Ross make a big loss. I like the sound of this one. Yeah, then. <laughs> Ross and loss, they go together. <laughs> so you haven't bought anything? No. I'm very much behind you at the moment. Well, will you just go and get a move on? OK, I will do. <laughs> See you later. OK. Get a wiggle on. Don't spare the horses. Good luck. I do love anything in its original box. 19th century, and they are scales by Avery and Company. Avery... I don't know how many millions of scales they made, but they're still going today, making electronic scales. But they started in, believe it or not, the 18th century. These are late 19th century. The scales weigh in at 35 pounds. Possible purchase, I think. Ah. Oh, hello, the scales. Are they a yay or a nay? This Dobbin is not the stallion in charge today. Oh, no, that'll be dealer Peter. Time to talk numbers, eh? Starting with the Art Deco coal bin. Fingers crossed. Let's not beat about the bush. This has got a meaty price on it. Normally, I would say six, seven Ex pounds off. Yeah, exactly. So I think we better say no to that. More interestingly, inside... Oh, goodies. They weren't inside. <laughs> it sounds good, yeah. <laughs> I've got some Avery scales and a model of Queen Mary's doll's house. A combined ticket price of £64. What about £50 for the two? Would that do it? Yeah. 100% happy? Yes. Let's shake on that deal. That's £25 for the doll's house replica and £25 for the scales. Thank you. Bye-bye. Charlie Boy is off the mark and still has £150 left. Now, how's that Izzy getting on? Ooh. This is a desk calendar, and there's a lot of them about. They're not rare items, but they do still do quite well, which in some ways is surprising because we've all got computers and phones and digital watches. It tells us the time, the day. We don't really need one of these. And, and these hark back to a time when you didn't have any of that. And you'd, you know, manually each day have to remember to change it. So for someone like me who's really scatterbrained, I would never remember to change it and I'd never have a clue what day of the month we were on. This one's, yes, it's probably Victorian, maybe early 20th century. It would have once, by the looks of it, had this complete red enamel covering and the vast majority of it has gone. It's just a sweet item, isn't it? And it harks back to a period of time that was so utterly different from how we live our lives today. £28, then. Time to get on the blower to the dealer. I'll put it over 24. Do you reckon she could get down to 20? No, no. Meet in the middle? Um, yes, you would do. 22? 22. Yes, amazing, thank you. Yeah. Shake on that. Nice. Thank you very much. If I give you that. First purchase done and 178 left to spend. 
Now back on the road trip trail. Meanwhile, Charlie's scooting off to the historic city of Sirencester. The city was founded nearly 2,000 years ago, soon after the invasion of Britain by Emperor Claudius in AD 43. It was a series of incredible discoveries unearthed beneath the streets of Victorian Sirencester that stunned the archaeological world and unlocked the lost story of Sirencester as a crucial city in the Roman Empire. The key to this fascinating story is held by the Carinium Museum's Learning Development Officer, Emma Stewart. Hello, Emma. Hi, Charlie. Nice to meet you. And you. Welcome to the Carinium Museum. Thank you very much indeed. So, Emma, is this the earliest mosaic you've got? This is the earliest one that was found. It's not yeah. the actual earliest mosaic. It's a 4th century mosaic. Right. As fate had it, a walnut tree was blown over at Barton Farm near Sirencester. Small mosaic tiles popped to the surface that had been hidden in the ground for millennia. A group of uh, antiquarians, amateur archaeologists got together in the town to look at how they were going to preserve this particular mosaic. If they hadn't looked to preserve this mosaic, then this would have been lost for eternity. Yeah. It was vital the city preserved their past. Henry George, 4th Earl Bathurst, opened the first museum in Sirencester to display and protect the mosaics. They were a revelation, demonstrating how people in Roman Sirencester lived. It's called the Orpheus Mosaic, mm -hmm. and it shows Orpheus in the centre, surrounded by animals and birds. He's Orpheus in, in, in the underworld. Orpheus in the underworld, Absolutely. exactly. What about the animals? How did they know these animals existed over here? The Roman Empire expands across Africa. Yeah. So there is a thought that the mosaic makers travelled across the, the northern tip of Africa, so they were familiar with these wild beasts. Quite of a shock to the local people, wouldn't it, to see these things? Absolutely. It's not um, something you see locally in the Cotswolds today. No. <laughs> Absolutely. You're right. Roman mosaics were the bling of the day and a sign of wealth and importance throughout the empire, proving Sirencester had become a centre of Roman lifestyle, commerce and government. Now, Emma, this is one of the two oldest mosaics that you have here, is that right? It is. Caesar's mosaic is one of the most beautiful and best preserved, if not best executed, mosaics from Roman Britain. The complete floor is a floor that's dedicated to Bacchus, the god of wine. Wonderful. And we've got Silenus, who was a teacher of Bacchus. Right. He's actually uh, known as a drunkard. Uh, he's, carrying, <laughs> yeah, he's carrying a cantharus vessel, which is a wine cup. He's travelling on the back of a donkey backwards. You mean in, he's out of here? In a drunken state, yeah. yes. In the centre, we've got Medusa, who's yeah. known as a monster in Greek and Roman myth. She yes. was actually a beautiful priestess who offended the goddess Athena and she was turned into this monstrous creature with snaked hair. So a lot of people today see her as a figure of fear, yeah. but on Roman mosaic floors, she's a, a, a person of protection. Specialist groups of mosaic makers sprang up to feed the boom in luxury living. Roman mosaic makers had to transfer their incredible skills to the locals, who had no idea how to make them. I'm ready with my goggles. What do I need to do? So just on the table in front of you, we've got a selection of tesserae. They're the tile pieces that were used. Pick yep. up your tile, Smith. Pick up a tile. Pop your tile in the centre and just give it a gentle squeeze. Three pieces. So I can just put those on one side. You can see they're not particularly uniform in shape. They use them in the same way that you're doing today, piecing them together a little bit like a jigsaw yeah. and just making the pieces fit. Did they have a sort of pattern book to go by, things they were following? There is a theory that there were pattern books used across the Roman Empire, but none survive today, unfortunately. You can see similarities in Roman mosaics, but no two mosaics are the same. A work of art, antiques, road trip. Absolutely fantastic. You now have the oldest mosaic in the area 
and the newest mosaic in the area. Thank you very much indeed for Thank your you, help. Charlie. Been Thank you, Charlie. Been fascinating. Meanwhile, Izzy's off to her next shop in Bampton, known to some with a more rustic nature as Bampton in the Bush. That's better. <laughs> What's the mood then? I really, really like what I bought. I love that desk calendar. And I'm hoping that Charlie's going to be just a little bit jealous of it. Yeah, keep Roscoe on his toes, eh? With £178 burning a hole in her pocket, Izzy's arrived at Arthur's Attic at Dutton's. Let's find out what's hiding in this lofty outlet. Oh, very fetching. Ascot? I think this might suit Charlie better. Ah, I don't think it's his colour, love. Now, hurry up. Oh, hello. Oh, I like this. It's a Victorian caliper gauge or button measure because it's only got a small scale. But what I particularly like about it is the craftsmanship. It's ever so simple, but you've got this lovely sort of brass mount and then the wooden section, and it just all slots in so nicely. It's only £25. I mean, I do really like this. It's a nice thing. Have you got the measure of it? Anything else? This is a bit of fun. At first glance, it looks like a pen. It looks like a fairly ordinary 1930s fountain pen. However, it's got this little ring pull at the end that made me think, hmm, I wonder. And if you open the lid, you've got a little scale for weighing letters, so it'd have probably been used by the post office. It's a Salter scale. Richard Salter, he made springs, and in the 1760s, he began making the first spring scales in Britain. And you see Salter scales everywhere, sort of, you know, the types of baking scales, um, shopkeeper's scales. It's a really well-known name, and throughout the 1900s, the company really thrived. So I'd better check the price, which is £25. You know, that does seem really reasonable. I've got two items. I wonder if I can find a third. Oh, I'm sure you can amongst this lot. You're on a roll, girl. I do love a good toast rack. It's even got a butter dish. And everyone needs butter with their toast. So it's made by Mappin and Webb. It's also got an aesthetic movement influence. Here with these sort of bamboo type archers. And they often drew their inspiration and influences from the Orient and Orientalism. I'm going to go and see what I can get for this. I've got three items and I've made a decision about all three. Well done, me. Three cheers for Izzy. Hip, hip. All right, never mind. Dealer Allison, incoming. Just noticed your bell. <laughs> three tings for Izzy. Haha, <laughs> much better. I found three items. OK. They are all marked at £25 each. These are from the same dealer, so they're £50. I can normally do 10%, so that would be 45. Mm. I was going to be really cheeky and say 25. Oh. <laughs> 35? Can we meet in the middle? Go 30? Yes, I think I know him. I think he would do that one. Oh, I've fantastic. That's Ooh. super. Good, though, then. But what about the toast rack? I'll oh, go to 20. Go to 20. Right, perfect. Let's Deal shake on those. Deal. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. That's £15 each for the Victorian button measure and the 1930s letter scales, and £20 for the toast rack. £128 in your purse, four items in the boot. Jolly good shopping day. I can't wait for tomorrow. But tonight, what's your favourite food? I yes. do like a pie. Then tonight I will buy you a huge pie and a glass of wine. <laughs> Provided you can promise me you haven't bought something that's going to make a fortune. I mean, I can't promise you that. Might be a very small pie. <laughs> <laughs> and a very tiny glass of wine. <laughs> Sounds delightful. Nighty night, you lot. Borada! That's Welsh for good morning. It's a new day on the road trip. Our team are well rested and hurtling through the South Wales countryside. Feel that as we're in Wales, we should be yeah. speaking in Welsh, but do you know any? Penbethai, that's antiques. That's antiques. Have you any Penbethai? <laughs> and you say yes. Yes. 
Yeah, good luck. <laughs> What's that? Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Someone swallowed a Welsh dictionary. <laughs> Henbeth I, the direct translation of that is old things. So, you are looking at yes. Henbeth I. <laughs> <laughs> you are looking at an original breathing Henbeth I. <laughs> Yesterday, Izzy got off to a flying start with four items bought. The Victorian desk calendar, a silver toast rack, a button measure and the letter scales. This is a bit of fun. All for a total of £72. Can you believe it? Well done, me. Blimey. Ah, leaving her with £128 to spend. Charlie's also done well, spending a total of £50 on a model of Queen Mary's doll's house and some 19th century scales. Are they a yay or a nay? But what does Izzy make of them? You know what's quite funny, Charlie? I bought some scales as well. You haven't? I have. That's I think they're in with the squeak. Charlie, I'm having issues fitting them back into the box. Bend it sideways, Matron. No, I don't want to break the damage the glass. No, I don't want you to break them either, to be perfectly <laughs> I mean, honest. I'd rather you didn't. Maybe I should. I'll just jam it in here. <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> be careful. All damages must be paid for. After dropping off Izzy, Charlie's made his way into the Vale of Glamorgan and to the market town of Cowbridge. Home to the aptly named Happy Days Home Store. But can this shop put a big grin on Charlie's face? Good Lord. A war emergency pack of Anusan suppositories. It's in its original box. Yes. It was common for the British Army to issue emergency medical packs, giving soldiers quick access to pain relief. And for other discomforts too. Thus, these suppositories. Somebody has used three of them because there's nine left out of 12. I mean, of course, that's something that you would need at any stage. But in the war, I'm amazed that they had things like that. In the original box, why not? I'm really quite interested in buying them. It's a bit of history. Yes. Anything else catch your eye? Dear, oh dear. The name Ross is synonymous with 18th and 19th century furniture. When I first saw it, I thought it was a pray dieu, pray to God, a prayer chair, because the low chairs you knelt on and put your elbows and prayed, but they normally had a bar at the back. This, then, I think, is a nursing chair. How old is it? Well, it's certainly 19th century. 18... 10 to about 1850. It's in super condition, and I think looking at that tapestry work on there, we have something that's English. And I'm going to make the most ridiculously cheeky, rude offer of £20 for it because I want to buy a piece of furniture on every single leg of this road trip and prove that English furniture still sells. Jan! Yoo-hoo! Dealer Jan! Are you there, Jan? Hello. Hello, Ooh, that was quick. Look what I found. Very nice. I think it's fabulous. And I can see it started off at £69, right. no discount. <laughs> it's now £40. You'd like it for even less, Charlie. I'm not going to mince about here. I'd like it for 20 quid. It's a miserable yes. offer, but it is what it is. And I suspect the reason it hasn't sold is because nobody wants it other than me. Get on your knees and pray. Yes, you can have it for 20 Mwah! I knew my prayers would be answered. Shall I hold it up to the light or shall I trust you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. Success! Patches. Now, let's see what deal can be done on the military suppositories. I dread to think. I'm tempted to say, Jan, what's your bottom price? But you're you? not going to say that, are you, Charlie? <laughs> I just said it. <laughs> I do apologise. <laughs> for you, Charlie, you can yeah. have them for 12. 12 pounds. The suppositories have the vote. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. There's a tenner. Thank you. Is that money down the pan? <laughs> we'll find out at auction. In the meanwhile, Charlie still has 118 pounds left in his pocket. Is 
Lizzie's going yonder, to the Ronda, on a slight detour to the village of Ponticlean. She's visiting Caelan Stud. Home to the oldest Welsh pony farm in the world. A breed that, by royal decree, faced slaughter but survived, making them the pride of the Welsh mountains. Breeder Dr Wynne Davis, MBE, has been dedicated to telling their story all his life. They've been in the hills of Wales and on these Welsh farms for three and a half thousand years since the Bronze Age. And is that what makes them Welsh? Well, I should think after three and a half thousand years, we can claim them to be <laughs> Welsh. <laughs> I'll shout for them now. Come on, come on, go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, come on. Gosh, look at them go. Look at that little foal. Have these ponies always been popular in Wales? Well, yes. Julius Caesar was so impressed with the Welsh ponies that were pulling the chariot, supposing him, that he took some back with him to Rome. So that was the start of a, our export trade, you can say, 2,000 years ago. These ponies haven't always been in favour with the rulers of the land, <clears throat> have they? No. Well, uh, King Henry VIII, in 1535, passed the act to kill off all Welsh mountain ponies. He regarded these little ponies as uh, nags of small stature and, of course, they were no good for him to go into battle. They weren't big enough. And anything that wasn't able to carry the knights into battle, he regarded as being of no value. Right. What happened to the Welsh mountain ponies once Henry VIII had ordered them to be destroyed? Well, the ponies all escaped up into mountains like Snowdonia, which were inaccessible for the slaughterers, so they couldn't get after them, so that these ponies, as long as they stayed up there, they were safe. Yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't have any Welsh mountain ponies now. So the Welsh mountain ponies really did live up to their names? Oh, yes, yes. And escaped to the mountains? Oh, yes, yes. When did things change for the Welsh mountain pony? Queen Elizabeth, when she came to the throne, she realised that she didn't have enough horses and she was a very sympathetic lady anyway. She didn't want to have them all killed. So she annulled the act uh, and then the ponies were allowed to come down and go where they liked. The Welsh people were so pleased that there were lots and lots of Besses, but we didn't have any Henrys. <laughs> <laughs> they must have been really resilient to stay up in the mountains on their yes. own. Well, after so many generations, the conditions up there were so harsh, they, they would breed themselves to be resilient and intelligent. Right. And it's the intelligence which has actually, put, you know, continued. That's why they're so popular now. Down through the years, the Welsh pony was regarded as a do-everything horse because of their versatility, whether on farmland or pulling milk carts and coaches. Today, the breed is commonly used in equestrian sports or being run on a show ring and judged at competitions, just like Wynne is doing here as a lad. I'd love to see these ponies running. I hope you don't expect me to run at my age, but I'd love to see you running with them as what? well. <laughs> you <laughs> right, just, you, just, you run on. Right, then. come on, lovely, come on. <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? You're doing a good show. Keep going. Down we go. Oh, my goodness me, who's leading who here? <laughs> Yay! That is very well How done. How do you do? I Ooh. thought you did an excellent job. I think I'll have to book you for the Royal Welsh Show next year. <laughs> I'd love yeah. to. Yeah. It looks like the Welsh mountain pony is in safe hands for many years to come. Back in the triumph, Charlie's making headway to Pyle. I've still got 118 pounds left, and I've already bought four things. But, true to my promise, I've bought a piece of furniture. Your final port of call is Nostalgia Antiques. 
Hello. Hello. Hi. You must be Lois. Yes, I am. Lovely yes. to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet Great. you. May I have a look around? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Thank you. I'm very excited. <laughs> There are some lovely objects dotted about. Will Charlie be able to find another alluring piece with dealer Lois's help? This is delicious. Do you know why I really like this? There are two things. One, when I saw it coming through the door, I thought it would be a reproduction. Right. Because this is the sort of thing that was reproduced in the Far East all the time. And it's not. It's Edwardian. It's 1920, 1930. Yeah. It's in fantastic condition. If you think that's a child's rocking chair, you know, if a child had been rocking around on that, it would have fallen to bits. I know, I know. There's no damage on it, no, I don't think. No, and it's fab. Ticketed at £55. If I were to ask you on bended knee what your best price was... I could do 40 Could you? Yeah. And that would show you a profit? Yeah. No, I wouldn't dream of trying oh, to beat you down any more, Les. You know, I'm an honourable gentleman. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> it's a deal for the Edwardian child's rocking chair. Oh. And the honourable Charlie Ross has a noble £78 left in his kitty. In the meantime, Izzy's made her way to the small town of Neath. Her final shop is Vintage 7 Centre. What is it with you and hats on this trip? Now, what may tempt you to part with your remaining £128, then? I do always like a flash of colour and a bit of sparkle. And this is Murano glass. Murano glass is very distinctive by its bright and bold and vibrant use of colour and the blobs and the swirls, which are obviously technical terms. And in this particular instance, there's a sparkle crackled effect going on as well. And we call this design Tutti Frutti because, well, it kind of looks like sweets in a, sweets in a bowl, really. But Murano glass has a really long history. So it's an island off Venice and the Venetian glass can be traced back to the 8th and 9th centuries. But Murano glass came to prominence in the 15th and 16th centuries. There is no price on here. I'm hoping that that means it's really, really cheap, a bargain price to me. Can Dina Gaynor shed any light? Go Gaynor. The best I could do on it would be 18. Not going to argue with that. At 18 pounds. Yep. Yeah, that's Izzy all spent up then. I well, wish you the best of luck with that. Thank you. And the Tutti Fruity Bowl concludes the shopping for this leg. Now, home time on our Welsh adventure. The trouble is, I don't really know the words of the Welsh national anthem, but when we are at rugby matches. And then he goes into the Welsh and I sing, Wales, Wales, blooming great fishes are <laughs> Wales. They swim in the sea. We to them for tea. Those blooming great fishes are Wales. <laughs> and then they thrash us. <laughs> Sleep tight, eh? It's auction day in the fair city of Cardiff, recognised as the Welsh capital in 1955. All roads lead to Cardiff City Auction. First auction is always the most important one. Now, one, two, three, Izzy Wizzy. Let's, Let's get, get busy! busy. <laughs> Come on. Let's hope you can magic up some profits, though, eh? Today sees the end of our experts' travels. After starting off in Stow on the World, Charlie and Izzy have meandered their way into Wales and to Cardiff. On this leg, Izzy bought five lots for a modest £90. An old fountain pen. But, you clever girl, it isn't a fountain pen. It's scales, letter scales, to measure in ounces. And at £15, I think there's a profit in them. Charlie spent slightly more on his five purchases, £122 in total. Oh, 
what a gorgeous chair. And it's such good quality. And it's Victorian. It's got this beautiful original rose tapestry. Yeah, I'll have my fingers crossed for Charlie on this one. To my left, 30 at the back. The man with the gavel is auctioneer David Rain. I've got 40 in the middle. What does he make of our experts' lovely lots? I think the item that is going to be the biggest talking point of today is going to be the World War II suppositories, fun item, maybe a military collectible item. Uh, who knows where they all go? My favourite out of all the lots is the Map and Web Toast Rack. Good quality, good maker. I expect that to make between 20 and 30 pounds. Today, David's full to the brim with bidders in the room and has others poised online. Come on, you two. The auction's about to start. Are you nervous? I was going to say no, but now you've asked me yes. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> Shaking like a leaf, darling. <laughs> First up, Charlie's military suppositories. Emergency war ration. Had them in your little ration tin. Crusty bread, a little square of cheese, a large packet of suppositories. <laughs> Ten pounds to start then. Ten to my left, twelve at the back, fourteen in the doorway. Come 16. on. Sixteen on the net. Yo, yes. Eighteen in the doorway. Oh, these suppositories, so they're going the well. Doorway. Look at the doorway at eighteen. Gosh, that's a relief. Charlie's come up trumps on the suppositories. Well, I rather regret buying them now. I should have bought a bit of furniture, possibly a stool. <laughs> That's below the belt. Next, we have Izzy's late Victorian button measure. I love it. It's quality. I've got 10 in the room, 12 new bidder. 14 to my right, 16 to my left. They cost? I've got 16 to my more. left, looking for about 16. I've got 18 new there bidder. Go. I've, got 20, go. I've got 20 right at the back. 22 to my oh, left. Oh, here we go. 24 at the back, 26 to my left. Oh, no. 20, 28 at the back. I'm going to sell at 28 pounds. As bright as a button with that win, eh? Well done. Thank you very much. Put it there. You know what the cool kids do? We do, we do this, we don't do a handshake. Sorry. <laughs> All my stuff. <laughs> now Charlie's first piece of furniture, the charming Edwardian rocking chair. It's a wonderful thing, I absolutely love it. It's Edwardian, it's in super condition. A bit like me, really, Edwardian and in super condition. <laughs> 20 pounds to start it then, lovely little item. I can't believe it. Ten just, it's got to be worth 10 pounds, surely. 10 in the seats for 12. I can't believe 12 this. 12 on the net. Or 12 on the internet, 14 on the net, 16. I can't bear this. I really rated this chair. It's going to sell at 14 pounds. That didn't rock out. Such a shame. It was lovely. That's one of the nicest things I've ever bought on the road trip. Fourteen pounds. Oh, that's really terrible. I thought I'd stolen it for forty. <laughs> Izzy's brass desk calendar is next. You've got such a good eye. On the second leg, could you do my shopping? <laughs> twenty pounds of the perpetual calendar. Twenty in the room, looking for twenty. Twenty-two new bidder. Twenty-four to my left. Twenty-six standing. Okay. Twenty-eight on the net. 30 in the room. You are unbelievable. A lot of money for the 35 to my left. I think we've got quite enough. I don't think we've got any more. Yes, I do. I'm going to sell it in the room at 35. Another small profit for Izzy, edging her up the ladder. Of another profit. Yes. Next, it's Charlie's model of Queen Mary's doll's house. Did you ever have a doll's house? Strangely not. <laughs> 20 on the net, look, well, 20 on, on the internet, look, 22 to my left, look, Thank you. 20, 24 on the net. 26 in the room, look, I've got 28 on the net, I've got 30 in the room for 35. 35 on the internet, 40 in the room. I've got 40, 45 on the internet, 50 in the room. 45 to the room at 50 pounds. Something to cheer for with a lovely profit. It's nip and tuck, Izzy. <laughs> I love this, but will it serve up Izzy another profit? No. Actually, I quite like it. Oh, good. He loves toast as well. <laughs> Inside of 22, looking for 24. 24 at the back, 26 You're making a profit. 28 at the back, 30 with me, 35, it's at the back of the room. They're bidding like the clappers, they're all over them. It's a quality oh, piece. 40 new bidder. Oh, ooh. Steady, mate. <laughs> 45 standing to my left, looking for 50. 50 right at the back, you want 55. 50. 50 to 60. I'm going to sell it 55. 
popping up with another win for Izzy. I'll get you some toast. <laughs> get me some suppositories, I think. <laughs> Hey, pulling up to the table is Charlie's second chair of the day. Cost £20. What do you think it's worth? Come on, you're an auctioneer and valuer. £20. <laughs> 22 in the room, 24 in the door. 26 at the back, 28 to my left, 30 at the back. £30. Got us all to the room at £30. A solid gain for the nursing chair. It's a profit. It's a profit. It's a Murano Tutti Frutti Bowl next. Uh, what bop a oh, Look at it. £20 to start, 20 at the back of the room, looking oh, for 20. It's been already. 24 on the net. Look at that. 26, 28 at the back. He's going, 30 he's to my left. 35 at the back, 40 he's looking for 40. Bidding. 45 new bidder. 50 right at the back. I've got 50 at the back, 55 season. Looking. I'm going to sell it at 55. <laughs> Good o. Izzy's on a roll with another smashing profit. <laughs> You'll be able to retire soon. <laughs> it's the battle of the scales. Which one will weigh in with a profit? Charlie's brass ones are up first. What would your scales be used for weighing? Pounds and pounds of gold. <laughs> Ten pounds in. Ten at the back of the room, 12 on the net. 16 on the net, 18 on the net, 20 on the net, 22 at the back of the room. Better. 24 on the net, 24, more. 26 on the net. Yeah, come on. 28 on the net. Come on, net. 30 on the net, looking for 35. The net. I'm going to sell at 30 pounds. That's balanced the books, Charlie. After commission, it's sort of washing its face, really, isn't it? So it's nine karat gold. Silver? Pewter. Pewter, I think. <laughs> Possibly tin. <laughs> Next up are Izzy's letter scales. Can she tip the balance further in her favour? All your lots, as far as I can see, have gone in the room rather than online. I think all four have been sold to the room. Are they all relatives? <laughs> 20 on the net. You just know how to do it, on the net. 24 to my left, 26 at the back. 28 to my left, 30 at the back. I've got 35, 40 at the back. <laughs> I've got 40 at 45. Come on. I've got 50 on the net. 55 to my left. Yay! 60 on the net. I'm going to sell it 60 pounds. You are amazing. <laughs> Some of it will rub off on me. <laughs> Another profit for Izzy. Well, it's been fun, hasn't it? No, not at all. <laughs> it's been dreadful. Come on. Right, let's work out the sums. Charlie started with £200 in his piggy. After auction costs, he made a small loss of £5.56p, leaving him with £194.44 for next time. Izzy began with the same amount, but made a profit. After costs, she carries forward a wonderful £301.06 for the next leg. Seldom can a man have had such a thrashing so early in a road trip. Well done, you. Thank you. Profits, profits, profits. <laughs> Allow me to take you out to dinner. Certainly, sir. You're paying. Oh. <laughs>